Whenever we have a scenario like this, where we've got 9s over t, and it's being divided by a fraction, what we do is instead of dividing by the fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal, 3 over t. In the next case, we start with s over 5, and instead of dividing by this fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal, 10 over t. Finally, in the last case, we have this thing on top, 3s over 5. And instead of dividing by this fraction, we multiply again by its reciprocal. We switch the numerator and denominator and multiply by its reciprocal. If we want, we could go ahead and calculate and say we've got an s divided by t and then combine all of the values, 9 times 3, that's 27, over 2. Here we would have, again, s over t. Combine the values, 10 over 5, that's 2. Finally, we have s over t. And then combine, oops, combine the values. We've got 3 times 10, that's 30 divided by 5 times 6, that's 30. So this is just 1. Now, there is another way to do this, and it's a nice visual way that I like when I'm working through these problems. I'm going to draw a single fraction bar. When I flip this fraction down below, the t becomes part of the denominator, and it joins the 2. The 3 becomes part of the numerator, and it joins the 9s. That gives 27 over 2 times s over t. On the next one, dividing like this will cause the fraction below to flip. And when it flips, the t will join the denominator. And the 10 will become part of the numerator. I could simplify to make this 2 times s over t. For the final one, when I flip this fraction, the 6t will flip. It'll become part of the denominator, joining the 5. So that's 6 times 5, that's 30. The 10 will flip as well to the other side. It will join then the numerator. And 3 times 10 is also 30. So this simplifies to simply s over t. That's how I visualize these and how I quickly get to the answer. I like this idea of visualizing where each part of the fraction, where it joins up with the thing on top. Thanks for watching.